Hey guys, and welcome back. This is Chosen Architect. Today, we're jumping back into some more All the Mod 7 to the Sky. Hope you guys are ready. So last episode, I talked about getting All the Modium, and we went to the dimension. We found some All the Modium, but now we need to get said All the Modium. Now, I know there are several different ways that I could go around the normal route for this, but in reality, I really still need to get netherite um, which means i need ancient debris in order to get ancient debris we have to go ahead and get, and find a way to produce uh netherrack and now netherrack does not spawn in the nether as we found out when i walked into the nether and was like oh this is void um so i've got to come up with a better solution i think i have a solution ready to go in my in my head and uh, it's actually gonna be kind of cool we're gonna use integrated dynamics still which is becoming one of the best mods in the pack so far um but we are going to go ahead and we are going to generate netherrack via that method it's going to be pretty cool let's get started first things first i need to go ahead and get myself an ender tank set up i think this is going to be the best way for us to go about getting lava from our crucibles to another source now if you're unfamiliar with how ender tanks work it's it's actually fairly simple we have uh, this ender tank here. If I place down, you can see there is the blue and the orange. So this is like input mode and export mode, and you can actually rotate this around. Now on the top, we can actually dye these individual channels. Um, we, can, we, we can dye them and it will change them to individual channels, which would allow you to link to another one that would be on the same uh, color channel, which is pretty cool. And this allows you to basically fill this tank up and then go place the other tank elsewhere, and that tank will be connected to the original tank, and uh, you have an interconnected network of tanks, which is fantastic for transferring without cables, because one of the biggest problems is just spaghetti cabling all over your base, and this makes it so much easier. Now, I'm gonna be hooking this up here. Let's see, let's pop up here, and uh, I'm thinking this is gonna be a good place, and the white channel I usually do use for lava, um, which is amazing. And then we're gonna have an export here. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna, you know, try and export to here, but we need to get ourselves a logistics, or a variable card, sorry, not logistics, a variable card. And we're just gonna go ahead and have this fill with lava instead from this crucible. I think that's gonna work. All right, so let's go ahead and configure this setup. I'm gonna be using a, uh, a drying basin and uh, we can kind of talk about that real quick. If we look up netherrack, right here is the netherrack. And if we take a look at how to get it um, by simply right clicking on it, you can see there's a drying basin. And it's asking for a magma block. And that magma block takes 0.5 seconds to convert into netherrack. How do we get magma blocks? Well, the same way with a mechanical drying basin. However, this takes five seconds to process this fluid. And it does cost a little bit of RF, but it takes five seconds, which is enough time, I think, to generate the uh, the lava that is needed for the next process. So it is gonna be pretty slow at start. There is a much better way of getting these resources later on, um, but this will definitely be something that supports us for quite a while. So let's go ahead and get these two things placed down. We have the, the mechanical drying basin. I'm gonna put another one right next to it. And we should be able to put the hammer next to this as well. And I'm thinking that should work. And then what I want is I want that to be able to send its crushed uh, material to the next section, which will end up going right here. And then that is going to end up leading um, into another setup that hopefully will end up going into one of these chests somehow. <laughs> we'll have to figure that out later on, but that's how that's going to work. Now, here's that fantastic ender tank. I'm going to plop that right on the top here of this one. And all I'm going to do to get lava into here is flip this lever and it's gonna start filling right here. It's gonna be outputting that lava directly into this basin. Now, that is going to uh, need some power. So I think what we can do is go ahead and get power routed and we should be good there. Now, this is where the integrated dynamic system is going to come in handy. It's gonna be a little bit, uh, a little bit interesting. So let's go ahead and route this. Now that everything's all powered, we can start talking about the integrated dynamics tunnel system. 
So the way I'm thinking about this is this block right here is going to be the home because we need to pull from this one into this one. And then we also need to pull out of this one to this one. Um, so we need an input and an output. We're gonna be inputting into the network and then outputting out of the network, whereas this is going to be considered the network. At least that's how I'm looking at it. So with that being said, we know that an importer goes into the network. So we'll use an importer. And then we know that an exporter exports out of the network. So we can do that. And hopefully this shows how to use a multi, uh, a multiple block um, item routing network. Uh, we don't even have to use any network IDs or anything for this. Um, it's just a simple matter of sending something in and then having something pulled out. So with that, we should just be able to put regular variable cards in here. And um, hopefully this is going to go ahead and start pulling out the blocks. And I might have to change which side this is targeting. I'm going to see if changing the target side matters. It did. Aha, so I have found the solution. This right here, I have set to down. So I went in and set that to down. It is working now. However, I am gonna have to filter this. For this, I'm gonna use my portable logic programmer. And then all I need is to say, I want specifically netherrack to be pulled out. To do that, I just go to item, put the card in, or I, I guess put the item in, and then put the card in, and that is going to set a item specific. And then we just place this in the item. And now only netherrack should go in there. So this all has to be processed now and is now doing its job. Ah, perfect. Now, as far as the crushing goes, this should be crushing, turning this into netherrack dust or netherrack rushed or ground or whatever it's called. Um, I need that to go into a sieve. And then this will get powered in the back. For right now, I'm going to have that sent into a barrel and uh, it is throwing in gold pieces, which is exactly what it's supposed to do. This material right here should, with a diamond mesh, give us rose quartz, netherite scrap at a very small percent chance, and netherite and, of course, cobalt pieces, all of which are very, very nice. But we really need that netherite scrap. You know what? They didn't actually take very long at all. Look at that. We got our first netherite scrap piece. Just like that. Uh, however, we do need four of these in order to actually make use of it. Now, while that's working on its process and we're working on getting ourselves some scrap, let's focus on some other things like how about more spells, spells that'll help us travel and traverse the Twilight Forest a lot easier. I think this is going to be very, very nice. However, to do it, I am going to need a few things. I'm going to need bounce, which is slime balls, pretty easy to get. And then I'm also going to need eventually launch once we end up getting access to rabbits. Um, but the main one is a leap. So you can see it requires these essences. Now the essences, this one's pretty easy for me to make. I can easily make that one, but this one right here requires milk. And how do I go about getting milk if I don't have cows? Well, there's an interesting way of doing that. All right, now hear me out. You are gonna need yourself in, uh, an atomizer. Um, and then you're gonna need to fill this with some water. This is gonna start producing H2O, water. We are gonna be using alchemistry to make milk. Could you imagine making milk a chemistry way? I bet that milk, I, I don't know. I just, that yeah, that would, it just seems really odd, but we're gonna do it, we're gonna do it. We're gonna create milk out of leather and bone. So over here in the, uh, the dissolver, we need to of course throw some leather in. The leather is going to generate protein and literally to make milk, we just need to give it a bucket, some protein, a little bit of calcium, and then water. And this generates a bucket of milk. However, getting calcium is a little bit more complicated because if we feed this bone, that's a good way to get uh, calcium. Also, andesite has a, has a little bit of calcium in it as well, along with all kinds of other stuff. But the main thing, the main way that I wanna get it is with bone. So if you take a look at bone, it, it's not right there in this, but it does turn into, um, I'm not even going to say it. It turns into this, and then this can be broken down into calcium. So with milk selected, let's go ahead and put this in here. Bam, bam, there we go. And milk 
is our process. Huh. Find a cow. Go milk the cow. Profit. Science. That's what it's about. Science. Who needs a cow anyways? So I'm working on the crafts that I need for the speed that we are going to get. And man, those things that we're, the things we're about to unlock oh, are going to make travel so much, so much faster. You're going to see this mod can be pretty, pretty powerful when it comes to movement. By the way, this is why I was so excited when I got that wilding kill. Ah, uh, the multiple wilding kill and ended up dropping these wilding wings. Oh, it was so nice because I knew this was going to be a thing that was going to end up getting crafted shortly, shortly within a, in the playthrough. Now, if you remember the past video, I did show you a method for getting slime balls using the combiner. And this was before we had access to mushrooms. Now, getting mushrooms, you, of course, I got tons of them from the Twilight Forest. So this actually makes it kind of easy um, to get slime now. We can get tons and tons of slime by literally placing this into our witch water that is over here. And that is going to immediately turn into a block of slime, which generates quite a bit, as you can see. Now, this is going to be perfect. So let me go ahead and place down the materials that we're going to need for our bounce that we're about to use. This will get made right here. By the way, these are all tier one spells. These are all really early on spells. And we will get our tier one spell right away. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and learn the glyph bounce. This one's fa this one's amazing. The glyph bounce is, is honestly one of my favorites. Next, we are going to learn the one that is going to allow us to be kind of shot in a general direction. Um, so let's go ahead and do that, which is also tier one, which is called leap. This is basically a, a slime sling. I know we have access to a slime sling, but this is a better version of a slime sling, I think. So with those learned, let's open up our spell book. So on eight, let's go ahead and do this. We'll say self. And uh, we are going to automatically throw ourself leap with some amplifies. I don't know how many yet, but I'm, I'm going to throw bounce at the end as well to make sure we get the bounce effect. And we are going to call this, um, let's see, swoop. <laughs> because it's going to shoot us up in the air. And if we use this, you notice we get some pretty darn good movement. And it is just like a slime sling. I think this is going to be best shown off, though, in the Twilight Forest. This is just one cast of this. Doesn't use a whole lot of mana. But my goodness, does it allow us to fly. Now, the bounce prevents us from taking fall damage. And that is wonderful. It allows us to get to these hills incredibly quickly. And, uh, oh, that reminds me. We should probably make a map. And while we're back, we should have the ability to make our netherite pick, which is going to allow us to break through this material. So looky there, I have, I have seven netherite scrap. We're also building up nether quartz this, this way, which is great. Let's head on over here. And, uh, yeah, we'll get this made. So I just need some gold, good old fashioned gold to make this pick. Combine it like that. I need a good netherite pick. I should have probably bought one a long time ago from the traveling villager. I think there's a way to netherite tip our tool here. If we really wanted to, this would give it netherite. I mean, should I do this? I hope it gives me the ability to actually break things I want to break. <laughs> the funny thing is, is I still can repair it with diorite. Uh, you know what? I'm going to go with the modded way. I, I think this is a, a good choice. Let's go ahead and make that map focus. Yeah, map focus is really nice. And paper. Uh, well, we're going to need a few more of those, right? Let's see. Enough to make a circle of paper. Put that in and we get a blank magic map focus this is gonna be how we adventure through the twilight forest and hopefully find some more of those hills so the, all the modium <laughs> hopefully we can gather more of it all right let's open the map while we're in here and we are in the bottom corner this makes this incredibly hard but notice there's a, a hill that is showing the hill that we've already found it is on the it is on the map also if you put this in your hand it's a little easier to see in the bottom corner there this little thing actually let me help you this this little thing right here that's a hill there's also a tiny hill over here but we'd have to wrap around to be able to get to those because we cannot enter in to this area without doing 
the progression of said area. Yeah, which this whole area, the, the Twilight Forest has its own progression to get through it. So last time I was in this hill, I was smart enough to give myself a path to get back to where that piece of all the modium was. And I believe it was right here. No. Right here? Wait. Where's the all the modium? Is it? Oh, it's right here. Very nice. Okay. So let's go ahead and crawl our way up there. And I believe this is an incredibly difficult thing to break. So let's make our way here and we're going to be breaking all the modium. Our first time. Is it just one? Oh, thank goodness. There's multiple pieces. Is there more? I'm going to go ahead and use the works evader. We got two all the modium ore and this gets smelted down in all the modium ingots, which will allow us to make things like dark matter. So wandering around the same area, I decided to go ahead and make up this spell. Uh, I changed my projectile spell to give it AOE, which mines in a three by three. Really nice, but the problem is, is you run out of mana pretty quickly with this. Um, but yeah, look what I found. <laughs> More all the modium. Now there is a way in this pack to use the all the modium that we find. We should be able to use it to our advantage. I wonder if I break right here. Oh, it still doesn't break it. Okay. But yeah, this right here, we can actually make some potions that allow us to see exactly where the ores are. And it looks just like x-ray. No joke. So the one time I've, I used it before, it reminded me <laughs> of like old school x-ray, but it's a, it's a thing that's in here and it's available for us to use to be able to hopefully find more of this Aldamati more as it's supposedly, oh, pretty rare-ish. And I just found some more. And you can only mine this stuff, by the way, by hand. You're not going to be mining it with a uh, quarry or anything like that. You're not supposed to, anyways. It should be disabled. Found some more. Oh boy, this is this is nice. This little cave is beautiful here. So I just got back in, and I now have uh, some piping set up, and uh, hopefully this should be flowing into the drawer system, and going into these new drawers that are set up. Of course, gold already has a spot. So hopefully this doesn't fill up and start pouring gold into another slot, even though it might. Um, I actually need to go ahead and craft with some of it. But I do want to get into the potion. I want to show you that all the modium potion, and uh, we can actually make a charm with it and potentially make the charm indefinitely work. We'll see what we can do. So let's do this. Let's make all the modium x-rayable. Uh, yeah, this is... This is gonna be fun. Um, and I have done this in all the mods six, I believe, like the regular overworld. Kind of interesting that I'm doing it here with this. But let's go ahead and take all the modium, for example. We need to make ourselves a hammer. I'm gonna go ahead and use an iron hammer for this. And what this is gonna allow me to do is get two, for right now, two for one. I mean, this is perfect, right? Let's go ahead and just do it all, get all of it. And now we have 22 and we've doubled our amount. That's awesome, right? Uh, but I am here to make the potion powder from Potion Master. Let's go ahead and craft the things we need for that. Um, this actually requires that uh, mortar. So there we go. And then this, which we make the ender dust. And then we end up getting all the modium right here. So let's go ahead and cook one of these. We'll cook that down. I'm going to go ahead and store the all the modium power for right now, powder. Um, I don't know if we need the powder for anything later on, but I definitely need this nugget. So, or ingot. We have the ingot ready to go. Let's go ahead and make this. Oh, did that consume this on uh, the craft? There's that. All the modium powder. And then we can cook the powder. This is going to turn this into an ingredient for a potion, but we need mundane potions. Mundane potions can be easily made by just putting a regular bottle of water in here with like some blaze powder that will create a mundane potion. And then what we should be able to get out of this is, uh, let's see some, all the modium sight potions. Yes. And we're going to turn them into the charm for that. Now I'm hoping, I'm hoping that we can use this charm indefinitely 
Uh, it may not be the case, but I'm hoping that that is the, uh, the thing that we're about to do. So let's go ahead and brew these potions. And then I'm going to make that charm. But while we're making that charm, let's get into Project E. Yes. Project E has something that may be overlooked by most, and that is the Repair Talisman. You may be seeing where I'm going with this. This is something that can easily be made early game. Uh, and you just keep it on you. And it will repair things, I believe, so long as it's in your belt slot. Um, do we have a belt slot? Surely there's one somewhere right here. When it's in your belt slot, I believe it will start repairing your stuff every tick. So you can see it's moving right now because this is repairing. If you actually want to see it, you can hit F3 and H to show tooltips, and you can see how it is repairing it one durability every tick, it looks like. That is awesome. Not every tick. I mean, every second. If you're going to look at it, it's every 20 ticks. But, um, yeah, restoring one durability. Look at that bad boy. Now, this potion is done. And now we have all the modium sites. Let's put this to use and make this. Oh, boy. This is the charm, which basically allows us to see. And if I right click this, it's going to start consuming some durability. I believe. And then when I'm done, is this going to be repaired? It, oh, it looks like it's on a, like a blacklist to be repaired. Darn, I was really hoping that would work. Later on, we might be able to make these absolutely unbreakable by using an Eternal Stella, so long as we find Stellarite and we make this incredibly awesome Forbidden Arcanus Forge, which is quite an interesting sight. So here I am, should I activate it? It's activated. I may have found all of it that was available. Don't know if it has to be in the charm slot or not. But as I move around, if we get close to it, it should show some like borders that are definitely X-rayed. X-ray like, look at that. Oh, that is so powerful. That is so powerful. Okay, I'm going to turn this off. Because that there's literally ore right here. So to change this, make sure that I have my mining on. And right there it is. Just like it showed. Oh, this is this is powerful. I mean, honestly, so long as you just get one, you can make like, several minutes worth of potions here this and unfortunately like this this will last a while i just don't know if it's worth all of that time because it, it does have two i don't know unless it's a combination of two minutes and 30 seconds worth um so yeah i'm gonna continue to break because there was more up here yeah as you can see there's the other one oh this makes and you can do this for all or by the way not just all the modium so the current amount of all the modium, I may have the ability to prepare myself for an adventure to come in a new dimension <laughs> already. This armor is kind of crazy. So I can actually make this armor on its own. Look at its stats. Plus 125 armor toughness, 12 knockback resistance, and plus 10 armor. This is the base. And you also get water breathing. And it says no no fall damage uh, from flying with the elytra, no crash damage. Piglins also become neutral and it's indestructible. Um, that's just this. Uh, the the armor is is just one part of it. If you take a look at the swords, that's where things get kind of out of hand. Um, the swords in, use this plate, and even the pick does fifty seven damage on its own with just this pick. If you take a look at this, it does 59 damage. This does 57 damage. The swords are crazy. Not to mention, I believe last time I had used this mod, the enchantability was kind of awesome on these as well. They had really, really high enchantability. Should I make it? I just, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's 
It's really nice. Find out how awesome this armor looks. You're gonna have to wait till next episode because we are gonna be diving into a new dimension and uh, hopefully finding even more exclusive ore from all the mods. Oh, there's so much, so much cool stuff to come. I am so excited. Guys, click that subscribe button if you uh, you want to stay following these uh, these videos. So uh, whenever I do publish a new video, ah, you can you can be assured that you'll get one in your notification box. Man, it feels good to be all the modium rich. Look at look at that. We can just toss it all out. I'm, I'm like fanning money around. Look at this. Oh, there's so much more to come. This is not even the most remotely powerful gear in this pack. Ah, but of course, guys, I do want to give a huge shout out to the sponsor of today's video. And that, my friends, is going to be a huge thanks going to Justin Nobody. This, I love the name. Thank you so much for your amazing support over on the Discord. Becoming a Discord premium member and supporting this content. Thank you so much. Now, another way you can support this content is by clicking that subscribe button and uh, giving this video a thumbs up and maybe commenting something down below. Maybe there's some secret you know that I don't know. I would love to hear it. Guys, I'll see you in the next one. And as always, thanks for watching.